Hello, I'm Julie Norton. I'm a vet from Yorkshire, from off of the telly. Um, I've also written uh, some books, so you might have either seen me on the television or read some of my books. Uh, this is Emmy, my lovely dog, um, who's uh, Jack Russell. She comes with me pretty much everywhere uh, and is also quite often seen on the television. Anyway, today we're going to talk a little bit about, or I'm going to talk a, a bit about Emmy Can't Talk because she's a dog. Um, obviously, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the factors you might consider when choosing uh, the right dog for you, for you. Um, and things to think about. Really, uh, there's no magic um, magic recipe for this. It's uh, but it's just some ideas to make sure that you uh, get the right dog uh, rather than the wrong dog. Before we um, start to think even about the specific breed. Um, or crossbreed that you might be uh, looking at. I think uh, it's really important to consider whether a dog is actually the right kind of pet for you. Um, there's all sorts of amazing animals out there um, and many of them are, are brilliant pets um, just as much so uh, as dogs. If you have a really busy lifestyle, if you're out at work uh, for much of the day and you can't afford uh, the, the time uh, to, to give to a dog that a dog needs, um, to keep his life or her life very happy, then it's certainly worth considering other um, types of pets. Uh, cats, for example, need much less um, intensive um, care, as it were. They look after themselves uh, and they don't rely on the same kind of level of, um, uh, of, of supervising as, as dogs. Um, isn't that right, Em? Uh, rabbits, for example, make brilliant pets. They can uh, live in the house as well as living outside in the garden. Uh, hamsters, uh, that kind of thing, even tortoises, brilliant pets. Um, so it doesn't necessarily need to be just a dog. Um, I have to say, I have a real passion for dogs. If I was to treat one animal for the rest of my veterinary career, then it would it would certainly be a dog. Um, so I think dogs are great. And um, if you decide that a dog is going to fit into your life and become part of your family, then um, a few thoughts um, about which might be the best one to choose. What do you think, Em? Em says already on board. I know all about dogs. Oh, he says, not very interested. Sorry, Em. Um, so what I would say, uh, first of all, if you've decided a dog is going to come into your life uh, without even thinking about the breed or the type of dog, uh, first of all, take a trip to the local uh, rescue centre or rehoming centre. Um, there's loads of dogs in the country that need uh, a home and um, that really need love and care and affection and they come in all shapes and sizes and often if you if you do that have a look around then the dog actually will choose you rather than you choosing the dog and, and sometimes you need to go with it with your heart rather than a, a calculated um, shopping list of things that you might be looking for so so first of all go and have a look around uh, rehoming a dog that's in need of uh, a new um, a new home is, is really the best way to go but if you are thinking of a, of a specific type of dog, um, there's obviously various features that you need to uh, bear in mind, certain factors that may uh, or may not make that dog perfect for you. So I think the, the most important thing is the level of activity that the dog uh, will require. Um, if you're very active um, in your normal life, if you're a, a runner, then you probably want a dog that can, can keep up and come, come out with you on your uh, training runs. A dog like a Springer Spaniel or Dalmatian would be a perfect um, companion. Border Collies have got almost endless energy, so they would be great. If your lifestyle is more sedate, um, then you want to be looking at a breed that is equally uh, sedate. So dogs like Cavalier, King Charles Spaniels uh, can make a perfect um, companion if, um, if you don't need to be pounding the, the fells and the, and the hills in your running shoes. Um, but it's a, it's a rule of thumb, but it's a, it's a good rule of thumb. Uh, but just bear in mind that all dogs do need loads of exercise. Um, so really the more you can give, um, the, the better. Um, the size of the dog, I think that's quite an important uh, factor. Personally, I like a dog like Emmy um, that I can pick up. Um, not because I carry Emmy very many places, but if she gets tired on, on, a, on a walk or if she gets injured, um, 
I can scoop her up and carry her back to the car or back home with ease. If she was a Great Dane, that would be completely impossible, even with a wheelbarrow. So I think size is quite an important thing. Obviously, if you've got a huge house and a big garden, um, then it may be perfectly acceptable to have a, um, a Wolfhound or a Great Dane or a, a really big breed like um, a Rhodesian Ridgeback, for example. If you're living in a small flat and you've got limited outdoor space, then it would be very difficult to have uh, a really big breed in a small environment. So size is important uh, from the practicalities of, of the size of the, of the dog, um, but also because of the, the, the feeding um, regime. Uh, a little dog like a Chihuahua maybe weighs three or four kilograms and they eat a fraction of the volume of, of food as a bigger dog like a Great Dane that might weigh 65 or even 70 kilograms. So, so that's something that's really important um, and that leads us on to cost. Um, obviously um, there's lots of costs that come into looking after a dog and you really need to consider these um, in advance of um, going out and finding that dog for you. Um, feeding costs are the biggest one I guess and a big dog could cost 20 times as much to feed as a little dog. Um, Emmy is not greedy um, but even then a big bag of food for her costs about 40 or 50 pounds. Luckily that lasts for many weeks um, but it wouldn't last for many weeks if she was um, 10 times as big. So that's something to consider. Um, costs, other costs, the veterinary costs, um, preventative um, healthcare, things like vaccinations, um, worm and treatment, those costs are generally fairly fixed regardless of the size of the dog, although if you've got a really big dog that needs um, medication, then the dose is correspondingly larger. Uh, other things to consider, kennel fees, um, again, same for a small dog as a big dog in, in most cases. Um, but there's factors you might not consider, so if you choose a dog um, that needs to go to the groomers very regularly, then that can be another added um, expense that might not be something that you consider. So a dog like a poodle, for example, uh, or poodle crosses, there's loads of those around, um, partly because the names sound really cool. So a Jackapoo, Cavapoo, Poodleer, it is a great name for dogs and, and lovely dogs too. But their um, hair doesn't fall out, it keeps growing much like our hair does. So they need regular trips to the grooming parlour to be trimmed and clipped and made to look nice. Um, and that can be every six weeks sometimes. So you need to consider that. A dog like Emmy um, has never been to the groomers in her whole life. Um, that's fair to say, isn't it, Emmy? Partly because she's so beautiful, she doesn't need to go to the beauticians, um, and partly because uh, she doesn't need a hair um, doing at all. But if she was a poodle, then she'd need to go really quite often, and um, that would be another another cost to consider. Um, I think you need to consider the situation of you and your family. Um, so if you're living alone, then it might be. Uh, a great idea to choose a breed that is, for example, uh, more suited to having a one-man owner, so dogs like Border Collies, for example. Um, Jack Russells often fit the same bill where they really focus and become very um, uh, intent on, on really serving one, one master, as it were. Um, whereas breeds like uh, a Golden Retriever, for example, uh, perfect family pets. Um, Staffy is brilliant with, with people and, and brilliant with kids. So if you've got a big family then it's really important I think to um, to, to consider that and, and get the thoughts of everybody else in, in the family of course. Um, th there's other factors to consider so sometimes um, if you have an allergy, uh, people that can be allergic to dogs and, and cats and so if you're allergic to, to, to dogs, if you know that you've got an allergy to dogs or anybody in the family has, then a non-shedding breed like, for example, a, a poodle or a poodle plus can be a really excellent idea. Um, it saves an awful lot of problems um, if you do have um, things like asthma or um, other kinds of, of allergies. And I've seen dogs in the past in rescue uh, centres and rescue environments that have had to be rehomed because a member of the family has um, developed an, um, an allergic intolerance to the dog hair. So um, so that's something to consider. Um, no problems with that with you, Emma, have we? 
you need to think about the other animals that you've got in your um, in your life. So if you have a, a cat or, or rabbits, for example, it might not be a brilliant idea to choose a dog like a lurcher or a greyhound, who tend to um, have a, a great antithesis towards both those species. Um, Emmy uh, actually loves rabbits. We've got two rabbits, and they happily play together in the garden, which is unusual for Jack Russell. But Emmy is uh, uh, certainly a very unusual type of Jack Russell at UM. Um, so that's something to consider. If you have a pair of house rabbits, then perhaps best not to get a greyhound. Um, and that goes for really anything, I suppose. If you've got other animals, you need to uh, consider how they, they may get on. It has been suggested when choosing a dog that you choose one that looks like you. Uh, I don't know how true that is, but there's there's people I know who've got dogs that are almost a spitting image of, of themselves with um, frizzy curly hair with poodle dogs and um, and weightlifters who have bull mastiffs. Um, but that's that's not a, a truism necessarily, and I wouldn't specifically choose a dog necessarily because it looks like you or any of your close friends. If they do, then that may be an added bonus. Um, but in summary, I think you know, go with your heart, visit the rescue centre, look around, see which dog comes to you. Usually these things happen very naturally and very organically and I don't think you need to be too formulaic about going out to specifically choose one type of dog. Um, go with your heart and just be sensible about um, choosing the dog that you think is going to fit in based on you know, little bits of advice like this. Um, whatever type of dog you choose, you're sure to have loads of companionship and love and um, that's such a symbiotic and mutually beneficial relationship both for the for the dog um, and for and for the owner. So good luck. Um, choose a dog. Choose a dog wisely, but choose a dog with love. Isn't that what you think, Ed?